Do you remember that leaky tank that we built about 10 months ago? Well, it turns out that we actually kind of need that tank in order to continue with our propulsion testing. Right now, Astra is building a hybrid rocket for Uroc, which, of course, utilizes some sort of tank to hold the oxidizer, which in our case is nitrous oxide. Because tanks are somewhat difficult, we decided to start on this problem early, which is why we were building tanks like almost a year ago. But I haven't really released any information about what our progress is on this publicly, because we've hit a lot of roadblocks along the way, and I couldn't quite figure out a way to tell the story properly. But I think we're at a point now where we can kind of go over what exactly we've been doing, how we've been approaching our problems, and hopefully how we've been solving them. So it is time for the Saga of the Tank. Building a tank might kind of feel like a trivial problem because well, how hard can it be? Well, it turns out that it's the pressure part of it that ends up being a little bit difficult. Now, there are plenty of companies which build tanks throughout the world for multiple different applications. We could just buy a tank and use that. But the issue with this is that most tanks are not really rated to super high pressures for like standard commercial use. Like if you're just going to go buy a water tank, it's probably going to be rated to like 10 bar or something. So nothing that we can really deal with because for our rocket, we want to get a tank all the way up to 60 bar, which is our operational pressure with the nitrous oxide. Uh, but that means that we actually need to have a safety factor on top of that, which means the tank actually has to be good to a safety factor of three for UROC requirements, which means that we need a tank that can withstand 180 bar. Now, obviously getting a tank to 180 bar is no easy task. So getting a company to do that professionally is gonna cost you some money. And if you know anything about Astra, we are kind of out of that. We're not rich! We're broke! We need to find ways to get around this issue while still maintaining a relatively cheap uh, product. But there's one other problem that we have to think about as well, which is the mass of the tank. So we're building a rocket, of course. If the tank is so heavy that we actually can't lift it off the ground with the engine, uh, it's not a very useful solution. This basically rules out tanks, which are made out of really thick steel. It's the conjunction of these three requirements that makes the task really hard, because it has to be light in order for it to be functioning on a rocket. It needs to cost not so much money so that Astra can actually afford it. And finally, it has to actually be able to contain the pressure which the propulsion requires, which is the 60 bar of operational pressure. Eagle looking great, here go. Our first idea on how to approach this was just to build a carbon fiber tube and then attach two aluminum bulkheads via bolts onto each end, thus creating a tank. This decision was mainly a function of the tools that we had access to. First of all, we had a sponsor, Aljo, which was willing to build our bulkheads for free. This made this design a little bit cheaper than it would have been if we had to just buy those bulkheads on the market. And secondly, we were able to manufacture the carbon fiber tube really easily as well because we had access to a carbon fiber winding machine at the Fasner Institute, which is another one of our sponsors. Unfortunately, this tank didn't quite go according to plan. The trick with making a tank like this is you actually have to seal the interface between the carbon fiber and the aluminum. And this turned out to be a lot more challenging than we thought. If you remember back to the first pressure testing, we basically failed at doing this and our seals were completely incapable of containing any sort of pressure. Uh, they leaked at like two and a half bar. The reason for this initial failure was quite simple. In order to assemble this tank, you have to push those aluminum bulkheads into the carbon fiber tube. But it turns out that the holes that are drilled into the carbon fiber are actually quite sharp. And so if you put the seals in the aluminum when you push it into the tube, all the seals kind of get chopped up and you end up with a seal that doesn't work. In our second version of the tank, we approached this problem that we had by creating what we called the seal protector. This is just a PLA part that we made, which would be fitted into the holes as we push the bulkhead into the tube. This would prevent the seal from kind of bubbling out into the holes whenever it passed through the hole layers, which was causing the cutting in the first place. And that worked relatively well, and it allowed us to go to our second pressure test. 1400 feet, still looking very good. And whoever's on the pressure washer, are you ready to go? And sink also ready to go. What are we reading right now? Uh, the bar is at three. Are we pumping? Three bar? Okay, can we turn the pressure washer on? 
Oh. Leaking, leaking. <laughs> okay, stop it. Stop it. So, I mean, this was just the filling process. No, nice. What happened? We totally blew the tank. Shit. Oh. Tank blew. What? Completely ripped. Yep. Oh man. Shit. Well, Wait, what? Like it's a clean cut. <laughs> Look. Yeah, it totally went like right through. Yeah. So it's. I I so I'm not even starting. I'm going three two. Degrees, right? Yeah. Forty-five. It's a well. It's fifty-four degrees, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You don't have anything protecting the screw holes here, right? No. You just screwed through. It's just screwed. Time. Yeah, that might might have been the problem, because the the threading of the bolts will create like a, a sharp spike. point. Yes, yeah, you're right. Huh, okay. And then you you only, that's the problem with like laminates, you only need what, like one small uh, fracture and then you get the, the progression of the fracture. Then it just rips. The because you, if it just delaminates, you create the pressure spike in the, in the angle and then it just increases. Yeah, okay. It just pushes it open. We actually managed to get to our highest pressure during this test, all the way up to 20 bar. In this case, you can see that we had a failure right at the first row of holes in the CFRP structure. And there are a couple of reasons for why this probably happened. First of all, you'll notice this is probably the weakest part of the entire tank because there are so many holes drilled into the carbon fiber structure. Carbon fiber is a really strong material and it works great when it, all those fibers are continuously oriented. But if there are breaks in that continuous fiber orientation, it kind of removes a lot of the strength. So all those holes drilled into the carbon fiber tube was obviously weakening the structure, which is why it failed right at the holes. A second problem that is not quite obvious at the start is in the way that we actually manufacture the tube itself. When you're winding a carbon fiber structure onto the tube, there's an angle that you lay that fiber on, which is best for the pressure that the tube has to deal with. In our case, that's 54 degrees. However, at the ends of the tube, when you're actually using the carbon fiber winding machine, you'll notice that the fiber has to kind of turn around and come back the other way. And in those small sections of about five centimeters before the end of the tube, the fiber orientations are not actually 54 degrees. They end up being a lot shallower than that. And at the very end of the tube, it's actually just 90 degrees. So long story short, what this means is that there's actually no axial strength at the ends of the tube. Uh, so if you put holes there, you're essentially creating a, a double problem of number one, weakening the tank because the holes are there, but also you're expecting there to be axial strength in a place where there's actually none. Stop it, get some help. But this didn't deter us. We were confident that we could fix these problems. And there are a couple things that we tried. I have a bad feeling about this. Roger 1202, we copy it. So the first thing that we thought about right after this failure was, well, why don't we strengthen the area where we're putting those bolts with some sort of metal? And in this case, we could actually just incorporate that metal into the winding process. If we just put like a layer of aluminum or steel onto the tube at the ends where we expect the holes are gonna be, and then we wind over top of it, it's almost like the metal is like incorporated into the CFRP wrap. This means that our tube won't just be bare carbon fiber and it will be a little bit more massive, but in terms of the masses that we're expecting, it's probably okay. However, this idea hit the wall really hard when we noticed a bigger problem, which is that we couldn't take the tube off of the mandrel. We ended up taking this thing to the freezer like two or three times and we put all of our muscle into it and brought some tools sometimes and we just couldn't get this thing off the tube. So <laughs> that idea was scrapped just because uh, clearly there's an issue with the manufacturing process. Roger 1202, we copy it. The next idea we tried was basically to eliminate the mandrel altogether. After all, if there's no mandrel, you don't have to take anything out and you won't have that problem. Of course, this is gonna add a little more mass because instead of just having the metal at the ends where we're expecting the screws to go, we're now gonna have metal that goes through the entire inside of the tank. Basically, that becomes the mandrel that we're winding onto, but that's also gonna be part of the tank. So we bought some steel, which is used for HVAC systems that happen to be the right size for us and we wound over top of that. 
There's actually one other interesting improvement that we made with this design. We noticed that the tank in the last test failed in the axial direction. So we wanted to enhance the axial strength at the ends of the tube where those layers are not exactly the right angles to give us the strength we need. To solve this, we wanted to wind some shallower angles onto our tube. But the problem is that winding these types of layers onto a tube using this method is nearly impossible. So this is where we came up with those PLA parts that you see on the end of each of the tubes. These are designed to actually hook the carbon fibers so that you're actually able to wind those shallower angles while maintaining the continuous nature of the fiber itself. And then we ran into our next problem. You see, it turns out that the steel that they use to manufacture HVAC systems is not exactly super precise. So the tube that we got was not precisely 250 millimeters in diameter, which is what we need in order to interface with the aluminum bulkheads that we had. And so when we went to go push the aluminum bulkheads into that tube, we found out that the ceiling wasn't really working anymore because it was, you know, a couple of tenths of a millimeter off. So after trying this idea of building a tube, which aluminum bulkheads will then be interfaced inside of uh, for almost six months now, we finally decided, you know what? This idea is dumb. <laughs> it's time to move on. This is actually a really important part of engineering, which is to realize when your ideas are actually not that great. And it's important to stay flexible in your process to be able to accommodate those changes. Otherwise you could be stuck with a really bad idea and trying to make a bad idea work is usually gonna cost you more time and energy than just switching at an early point when you recognize that there was a problem. 60 seconds. Now, instead of building a tube, which we're going to interface two bulkheads into, we're actually going to build an entire tank, which will be able to be watertight. And then we're gonna wind over top of that entire tank. Kind of like the typical way that you would go about building a tank out of carbon fiber. But the trick though, is that we have to be able to manufacture some sort of a tank out of really thin metal, uh, which will be actually watertight. The first idea that sprang to our minds was, hey, well, we'll just weld it together. So we bought a welding machine and we started to try to weld uh, 0.7 millimeter aluminum sheets together. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. I am by no means a welding expert, but I can now confirm to you that welding thin sheets of aluminum together is very difficult. If you want to do this, you're definitely going to need a professional. So instead of welding our aluminum tank together, we decided, well, why don't we just glue it all together? After all, the only requirement is that the tank actually be watertight. It doesn't have to hold pressure. So as long as we can make it so that it's, you know, doesn't have any leaks or anything, we can then wind over top of it and the carbon fiber will give the whole tank the structural strength that it needs. Right. So to make the tube, we just bent a sheet of aluminum into a cylinder and then siliconed it together. And then to build the bulkheads, we actually used our casting knowledge and cast them out of aluminum. It took us a couple of tries to get this process working well. In the end, we had to actually wind three different tanks. But unfortunately, we encountered our next problem in one of the reviews that we had with the Yurok team. It turns out that the way that we connected the entire inside of the tank together with silicon is maybe not the best thing to do if you're trying to use nitrous oxide as the thing that you're containing. Nitrous oxide is notorious for being an excellent solvent which means that it dissolves things. In this case, it's actually really good at dissolving polymers, which is essentially what silicon is. We might have an issue with this. So we are back to square one, needing a tank. <laughs> so after 10 months of trying to build a tank ourselves, we finally had to resign ourselves to the reality, which is that, hey, we need to go and get some outside help on this. So our final solution is this. We've bought a steel tank, which is used typically for water purposes. It's rated to about 15 bar. We've slightly modified it. It had an opening on the side, which was of course not very useful for being a rocket tank. So we had to grind that off and then weld over top of it so that it was completely shut. Once the steel tank was modified, we were able to then wind over top of it. And this is the result. Now it might not look that impressive, but I can assure you this is gonna be able to withstand some pretty serious pressure. The only thing left to do is to put that to the test. So here's the hoping that our final tank solution is going to be the one that works. Also, if you're interested, the total cost of the tank is actually pretty cheap in the end. It's about $100 for the steel tank, about $100 for the carbon fiber, and about $50 for the epoxy that we used to build the tank. So in the end, just for the tank itself, it's only about $250. This actually ends up being cheaper than the tank that we were building before with the tubes and the aluminum bulkheads. So 
it just goes to show you that sometimes if you make some design changes along the way, you learn some stuff. As long as you stay flexible, you can always come to a solution that is a little bit better. In this case, it's better financially. It's not really better from a weight perspective. We have definitely added a couple of kilograms because of the thick steel that we're using as a liner. We're hoping we'll be able to compensate for this by just putting more power into the engine. Be sure to stay tuned to see how the engine performs with this new tank, hopefully able to withstand the pressure that we want. Be sure to drop a like on the video, and remember to expand your horizons.